We're here at the Academy Sports Rigging and Techniques at the CCA Workbench, and we're going to be talking about some kayaking. And right off the bat, you know, inshore and offshore, what do you have to do before you go anywhere in a kayak? So before you even think about getting in your kayak, going inshore or offshore, I like to do a little bit of a safety checklist. So I want to make sure I have all the essentials I need in case something does go wrong. Right. So number one, you got to have a VHF radio. Uh, especially offshore, so you can communicate with the Coast Guard or anybody else that's out there with you. Your buddies, in right. case they're catching fish, too. Right. Uh, number two, you definitely want a life jacket. You want to find one that's comfortable for you that you can wear all day and not have any issues with it. Right. Uh, Allows you three, to paddle as well, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Freedom you of definitely movement. Definitely need freedom for your shoulders and everything. Number three, you need a visibility flag, mm -hmm. one that can sit high above the waves if you're offshore and a boat can't see you, so I recommend like five or six feet. Right. And then number four, uh, you want some sort of noise-making device, whether it be an air horn or a whistle. That way, if someone doesn't see you, you got to flag them down and make sure you get them out of the way. You or you definitely want to be seen to when way. you're right. that low to the water. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's a bunch of nuts out there. Hey, hey oh, yeah. I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> All right, now, you, you know, we were talking about inshore and offshore. What are the main differences when you're going to start off inshore, right? So uh, I'll go ahead and start with uh, my inshore setup. Mainly, I try to keep them similar, mm -hmm. but uh, the main difference is I can take more equipment inshore because I'm not too worried about if I do flip, uh, chances are you're going to be in shallower water and you can get your stuff back. Might be back able to get your quick. stuff back. Right. So uh, this is my kayak. I fish inshore and offshore out of it. This is a brand new one, right? Brand new Vibe Yellowfin 120. Very nice. And uh, I use it both inshore and offshore. And uh, I try to keep the setup almost identical mm -hmm. because uh, the cool thing about this kayak is they now have a splash guard in the front tank well. Right. And uh, so it's really good for inshore if you're sight fishing for bonefish. Uh, you can put your paddle right through there, and if you're standing up, your rod's easily accessible right here for you to grab and be stealthy. Now, if there's a lot of wind and <laughs> if there's a lot of wind and you find yourself getting pushed towards the fish you're trying to catch, that would be the perfect time for you to grab your power pole micro oh, shit. and stick it right through a scupper hole and keep your ground on that grass flat. Very nice. And then obviously you can tie this off, right, Cop? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. And then uh, going offshore, uh, I try to keep the same setup, except I will limit the amount of things I bring, especially rods. I'll keep it to three rods, two live bait rods, and one for jigging in case I'm slow trolling around offshore and I see something on my Garmin, like a wreck, and I want to drop a jig on it. Right. The less gear you have when you go offshore, the better off you are. Right. And I, I keep that rod holder right there because uh, for boats, you know, you have an outrigger so you can spread out your, uh, your live baits. Right. Uh, on a kayak, it's a little bit different, so you don't really have the capability to have an outrigger, so I'll you want make this rod holder point outwards to keep that bait separated from the one on this side. Right. Whoa. He's going to go over. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what kind of fishing are you actually doing when you're out there offshore? What kind of species are you targeting? So offshore, you can target anything from sailfish, wahoo, kingfish, tuna. This time of year, everybody's targeting the tuna on their vertical jigs. You just go out to 300 feet of water check your Garmin and you'll just see them all over the place on your sonar chart. It's amazing. Right. And you just drop the jig to the, to the fish? Drop you, the jig. Like you're never stopping, right? Cause you, you're never stopping. You're never always stopping. moving. Yeah. So if you're jigging, you're, I mean, you're always slow trolling your baits cause you're fighting a three to four mile per hour current. But if you do see a wreck, the good thing is you can just pass it up, anticipate where that drift's going to take you. And then when you drop your jig, you should end up right on that wreck where those fish are. Right. Do, when you have to go for those distances when you're drifting, do you make any contingency plans for having to paddle all the way back? Or um, Some people, what they'll do is they'll set up a drift where they'll start at one point and they'll end up at another and they'll have like a friend of theirs pick them up or something just so they don't have to paddle the entire day. Right. Uh, other times, you're pretty much on your own. You're fighting that current all day. <laughs> Oof. Well, um, do you like to troll live baits? I mean, do you keep baits alive on this on this gear? Yeah, you can put uh, in this crate back here, you can put a five gallon bucket with an aerator. Some people will even set it up with a bilge pump to make it into a live well. Right. And uh, so for my outrigger rod holder, I'll use um, a conventional setup and I'll send a bait down with a trolling weight or an egg sinker about 50, 60 feet. And then uh, on the other side, I'll fish the surface just so like my baits are separated and I'm fishing the water column, so I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone there. Keep one up on the top and right. one down deep. Do you ever catch any groupers or stuff like that with a deep bait? Um, it's, you can if the current's really ripping. It's very difficult, but oftentimes people actually catch them more on jigs than live bait. Yeah, we do have a problem with current here, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. You, when, you, when you're on the inshore side, do you target 
any uh, snook or snake heads or any of that? Do so you go into oh, freshwater with this kayak? Ab absolutely. Freshwater, especially down here in South Florida, we have all the exotics, peacock bass. You can sight fish for those, largemouth bass. I imagine it would be head. perfect for that snakehead fishing. Oh, absolutely. Because you can get really shallow. Yeah. <laughs> Colin, Colin, boat's easy to launch, really easy to launch. One man job? Yeah, one man job. Especially this kayak's <clears throat> about uh, 62 pounds, so it's really easy just to lift up and it's a really good stow and go vessel. I like it. Well, I think we're about done here, aren't we? Well, good job, fellas. Y'all did a great job. Don't you think, Breach? They did a oh good job. Oh my gosh, that was like the best rigs and techniques ever. You're in a kayak, you're almost slipping over. Colin's doing a great job. Gosh, guys, you got, you got it going on over there.